Hello kids, cool dude Clem here and you join me out in the show today because we're going to crank this thing right up, as Photon would say. So anyway, I brought my Tesla coil out into the shed and I've got it on this manky old drawer thing. You can see it all there. This is the most important part of the thing. Anyway, hope you can see everything okay. I hope the camera's not going to glitch out while I run this thing. So, first of all, we're going to run this at 70 volts like it was earlier, which is going to be provided by this transformer here. And unfortunately, that now, unfortunately, as you probably know, my webcam has no audio equalization on it whatsoever, so. Parts of this video are going to be extremely loud, and parts of this video are going to be barely audible. There's nothing much I can do about that, because I don't have my microphone preamp out here. And also, the audio input jack on my laptop is busted anyway, so I wouldn't be able to use it. So, I have the interrupter disconnected, so it's a little reluctant to start oscillating. I'm going to plug in the control circuitry. I'm going to have to cycle the power a few times, and eventually it will catch there we go might be able to see we've got a little streamer there so it shows it's working of course this is the low voltage test anyway what we're going to do now is what should I say what I am going to do now I don't know why I keep saying we when I mean I but I made this other secondary I've just got to put a top load on this, but this one is a thousand turns. It's a thousand turns, and it's about 580 kilohertz resonant frequency, which is kind of strange, really, because it's kind of a coincidence, really. Because I've seen a few other tester coils running, and they've also seemed to be around 580 kilohertz. Well, a couple of them, anyway, which is, seems to be kind of a coincidence. I just need to put a top load on this thing, and I'll be right back. Here's the new secondary in place. I've had to revert to my old primary because this is a little bit thicker than this one. You might be able to see. But we should be all ready to go and, uh, oh, let's see how well this one works. But we should be all ready to go and, uh, oh, let's see how well this one works. I'm not getting anything. My little RF meter here. Let's see if that twitches at all. Oh, I spoke too soon. I was just a little reluctant to start oscillating, that was all. Although I think this particular coil gives us much better output anyway. I would have liked to have used this one since it's more turns. So we've got a better turns ratio and a lower frequency, so that would be less work for the gate drive transformer. But still, this one gives us the better output. Right, so now we know it works. Let's crank it up. You know, I think I've just seen one of Dad's old love notes on this on the wall here. He says, I love Sue. I wonder if he wrote that. Anyway, we know it works at 70 volts. Let's see how well this works at 100 volts. Then we're going to step it up to 170. The only thing I'm worried about, other than a popped MOSFET or two, is whether I'll be able to record this or whether my camera will spaz out. Either way, let's see what we get at a hundred volts. Oh, that's a little better, isn't it? Don't know if the camera caught that. The camera probably glitched out. Alright, I'm going to test my MOSFETs. Heat. Well, the MOSFETs are okay, but we do have one smoked 10K resistor right here. I don't know how well you can see that in this light, but 
gonna have to do something about that before we run this next turn. Obviously, 10k is not enough, so 10k is not enough for the feedback, so I'll be back. I've put in a new 10k resistor in line with the gate drive, tra I mean, feedback transformer. I've got gate drive transformer on the brain, and the original. 10k is still okay, it's still within spec. So we're gonna run this again and see what else blows up. Nice. Right, did that resistor get hot? Hmm, it's uh it's warm. This is the big one. I'm gonna run this on 170 volts. I know some people will run this on about 340 volts, but this is as far as I actually dare go up with this particular coil, because you know the problem we had with the resistor, but when we just had this on 100 volts, so I don't know what 70 more volts is going to do to this. Hundred seventy volts. And there goes another resistor. So I've now replaced that with a 33k resistor, you cannot see what I'm pointing, there we go, you still cannot see it, but this is the final run at 170 volts. Yeah. I think we need a moment of silence for that 330k resistor that gave up its life so we could see some plasma. Okay. So, anyway, I guess that's just about it for this video. So I'm just gonna do some rambling while I pan around this incredibly messy shit. Inside Tech Channel is probably freaking out at the state of this organized chaos. Anyway. I've really forgotten what I was going to ramble on about anyway, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video, so, until next time, goodbye. Okay, this is take 5,469 of showing the schematic, because I keep forgetting a whole bunch of stuff. So, anyway, this is the schematic of the tester coil. And you might have noticed that it bears a striking resemblance towards... Oh, wrong way. Um, this one. This is the original. And this is my modification. So, it runs constant wave. Now, the only trouble is, as you saw in the video, it takes a few cycles of the power to get it to start oscillating and also my feedback resistors burn up. Although I think I've got a little solution to that problem, which I will show you in just a minute. But you might have also noticed that all the component values are as they are in my circuit. Like for instance here, I've changed those from IRF360 to IRFP840, so those are the MOSFETs that I was using in my circuit. The, everything is pretty much exactly the same as it, well, everything is exactly the same as it is in my circuit. The only difference is that these capacitors here are on the supply rails to the gate drive transformer chips. In the original schematic, they were one microfarad, and they are in this schematic as well. Whereas in actual fact, I've used a couple of 100 nanofarad capacitors on the supply rails because well that's all I had so that's what I had to work with but ideally that's what you'd want to use so that's why I've left those at one microfarad so anyway this is my solution for the resistors burning up issue just gonna completely get rid of the feedback transformer and instead have a feedback antenna connected through a capacitor to the logic chips and hopefully that should still work and of course no more burnt up resistors 
So, anyway, that's just about it for now, so... Um, in the next video I might try that, in the next video I might do something else. Anyway, that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.